Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I am going to get into a little bit of color theory with this video and before that scares you away, it's actually a lot of fun. I'm going to explain a few things about color theory and complementary colors, the color wheel, things like that. And this is going to help you with mixing your colors. The idea that each color kind of has a more warm tone and a cooler tone. And when you are at the store buying those tubes of paint or you have your paint palette and it has two different types of yellow, two different types of red or blue or green or whatever, and you're wondering, okay, which one do I use? I'm just gonna help walk you through uh, some ideal ones to use for creating different types of colors. So I'm gonna get into that right here. Let's jump right in. Okay, starting off with a cool red, that is Alizarin Crimson. And I'm just gonna go down and put little swatches of each of these. That is Cadmium Red Medium. It is somewhat in between a cool and a warm tone. And then the Cadmium Red Light is a very warm red and of course w red itself is already a warm color as well as yellow uh, but that top one is the cadmium yellow light it's very lemony that is a cool uh, tone and then the cadmium yellow medium is more towards that red side so it is warmer and then with the green we've got that viridian green that is much more towards the blue side so it's a cooler tone and then Hooker's Green is somewhat in the middle of a warm and a cool tone. It's kind of a blend of the two. And then that Sap Green is much more towards the yellow side, so it's more towards the warm end of the spectrum. So that's why it's considered kind of a warmer tone. And then finally we have the blues. So that is Manganese Blue. It is your cool tone. It's a little more towards the green. And then that middle one is Cerulean Blue. It's kind of somewhat in the middle and then this last one is ultramarine blue. I consider it a warm tone. There is some debate about whether it is actually the warm or the cool tone, and we won't get too much into that. I consider it warm because it is actually going more towards that purple, which is closer to red as far as having hints of red in it. So that's why I consider it warmer, whereas the other one is kind of a little looks cooler. So again you can you could argue and debate it but um for for this purposes i'm considering ultramarine more of a warm blue and again blue itself is a cool color so you kind of have to take that uh piece of it but i am creating a color wheel here pretty quickly and you have your purple at the bottom and the whole idea is you have your primary colors which are yellow blue and red i've already put those on there with the warm and the cool tones of each and then there you get your red to have orange and then of course green was already mixed up i already purchased that um those colors so there's your warm and cool tones of the green so that's going to come into play a little bit later for now what i'm going to do we're going to start with a warm red so that's cadmium red light it's more towards the orangey side and then i'm going to take my warm blue my ultramarine blue and mix those together and you're going to see because they are very warm tones when they are mixed together that red is more towards the orange side which is the complement of blue and when you mix complements i'm going to show later in the video it creates more of a muddy brownish gray color so that just kind of gives you a little hint of maybe what what might happen so you have i'm now doing i have the warm red and the cool blue and we're getting a little bit of a purple color but it's a little still kind of sort of muddy so now we're going to try that alizarin crimson the cool red and our warm blue and it creates a pretty vibrant lovely purple so you have your red that's cool is much more towards that blue side it's not as close to the orange so you're not going to have as much of a muddy brown effect same with the two cool tones uh so i have my cool red and my cool blue the manganese blue and sorry it got a little messed up with the i had a little too much red and not quite enough blue in there so i was trying to show you what the purple would actually look like and <laughs> had a little bit of a struggle with it and i did have like a little kind of blop of red in a second here that was completely unintentional but that's just me trying to mix the colors so you can actually see 
the type of purple. See, there's that little blob of red, but adding some more of the manganese blue and the alizarin crimson together, you get a, you can see you get a pretty decent purple because they're cooler tones. They are not as close to opposites on the color wheel. So same thing, we have our warmer yellow here, which is more towards the red or the orange side of things. And then we have our warm blue. And you can see that the, that color creates much more of the sap green, the very warm green. We're gonna also have our warm yellow on the top there and mix it with a cooler blue tone. And that's gonna create a really nice, kind of green it's a little more towards the middle cooler tones and again we're, I'm going to show you the cool yellow with the warm blue and that warm blue is a little more towards the purple side so again you have your complements coming into play yellow and purple are complements when you mix complementary colors they get a little more muddy so that's why that green was a little uh, kind of warmer, muddy in tone. And then finally, the most vibrant are those two cool tones, the, the cool yellow and the cool blue. Finally, we're going to go ahead and do the same with our red and yellow to make orange tones. So you've got your warm red on top, your warm yellow on the bottom. And sorry, they started mixing far too well. There was a lot of liquid in that paint. So uh, the second batch is the warm red and the cool yellow. And these are already both warm tones and they're right next to each other on the color wheel. So there's not as much of a challenge which having, with having some of those muddier colors. It just depends on what kind of orange you're wanting. Do you want one that's a little more uh, of a, like really warm with the two warm tones or do you want kind of a little bit of a peachy tone coming in with the warm red and the cool yellow? It just, it's up to you. But again, since these are already yellow and red are more warmer tones in the color spectrum, uh, you're gonna probably do pretty well either way with whichever yellow and red you use. I personally really like the two warm tones or the warm red and the cool yellow. So just showing you what that looks like so that if you are mixing up your own secondary colors, and again, the secondary colors are when you mix primary color, two primary colors together. So here is me showing you what that looks like when you mix complements. So that was orange and blue. It's a very muddyish kind of brown color. There's maybe a little more orange in there than blue. You have to find the balance, but green and red creates a very, uh, in kind of equal amounts, creates a very muddy-ish color. So it's just going to tone everything down. And not that there's not really any wrong way. This is just going to help you understand which are going to be more vibrant colors. So if you want higher brightness, you're going to probably want to mix your cooler tones or a, a warm and a cool depending on the complements. So there you go. And again, with the yellow and the purple, very, very muddy toned down type color. So there you go. There's your primer in mixing watercolors. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless and I'll see you soon.